seven of the children have been identified as chronic gasoline sniffers. Let me go, sister. I want to kill myself. In a remote and inaccessible part of northeastern Canada, the Innu people live two conflicting lives. One is the life followed by their nomadic ancestors for thousands of years, based on hunting the caribou, which lies at the spiritual heart of their culture. It is a hard, physically demanding existence, requiring sharing and cooperation. But it has enabled the Innu to survive in a harsh environment frozen for most of the year. But since the 1960s, most Innu have also lived another very different life. In an attempt to transform them into modern Canadians, the government has moved them to permanent villages like Davis Inlet, an isolated island settlement off the Labrador coast. The collision between two cultures has made Davis Inlet one of the most troubled places in Canada today plagued by alcoholism, sexual abuse, and suicide. In 1993, almost a third of the adults here tried to kill themselves. 70-year-old John Poker grew up in the country, but was moved here in his 40s. Since then, he and his family have been at the center of many of the tragedies in the village. Today, he's trying to halt the destruction of Inu culture, and is painfully coming to terms with his life. For the Panashwe family, the last 30 years have been very different. Pien Panashwe has been able to resist the intense pressure to change and has tried to bring his children up away from the settlements. Pien and his brother Matthew still spend eight months of the year in the country with their families, following the old ways. But now, more and more, even their life is being disrupted. After a week in this camp, they've still not killed any game. Pien's youngest son, Melville, is 17. He's only been to school for a few weeks in his life and doesn't speak English. Like the other young people, he still learns in the traditional way, by watching and listening to his father. Through the very different lives of two families, we explore the dilemmas facing some of the last native subsistence hunters in North America today, the two worlds of the Innu. For John Poker and his family, life since the move to Davis Inlet has been a nightmare. In 1977, his brother, his sister-in-law and four of their children drowned as they tried to reach the mainland by canoe. Six years later, his daughter and son-in-law died in another drink-related incident. Today, John lives with his surviving daughter, Kathleen, and her four children.
John Poker's nephew, Prote, was only 15 when he lost his parents and most of his brothers and sisters. Like many other people in Davis Inlet, he himself has attempted suicide. Today, he's one of the most active leaders in the community. The government and the church moved the Northern Innu to Davis Inlet in 1967, promising them modern houses. But most of the people here still live in shacks, without sewage or running water. Now Proti and the other young leaders are pressing a reluctant government to move them to a new settlement, back on the mainland. They are also fighting to regain control of their lives and to force Canada to recognize the Innu's rights to their land, which they have never surrendered. The elders sometimes get very really upset, like they used to be the leaders traditionally. And I see the gap, uh, like a division between myself and, and the elders, not communicating, I guess, the way they, sh they should be. And it's, and one of, and that's the, that's the problem I see in the leadership today. The relationship I have with my uncle is, uh, we don't communicate directly. He was chief for a year. When he lost the election, he felt he was neglected, like we're not supporting him. I think that's where the division started. The church had a lot of influence on a lot of people. Used to have the drum dances, but it was later condemned by the priest. And he was saying that they're worshiping the devil. And the elders were ashamed to practice their the cult like the dances and sing their songs. And it passed on to the children, to the kids. I think that's uh, where a lot of the fear came from, is by the church.
Matthew and Pien Panashwe worked with the last shaman to perform the shaking tent. This ceremony is at the very heart of Inu culture. In times of hardship, the shaking tent enabled the Inu to communicate with the animal spiritual masters. It's not been performed since the move to the settlements, but many believe the Panashkwes may one day have the confidence to do it again. <laughs> It's an important day in Davis Inlet. Seventeen children are returning after six months in Alberta where they've been treated for gas sniffing and alcohol abuse. The whole village has turned out to meet them. The predicament of the children has created enormous public sympathy. Many people believe that their treatment will have made them better able to cope with life in the settlement. Feel good? How do you feel better inside? How do you feel better? Are you happier? Tell us how you feel. But many in Davis Inlet are not so confident. They know that the fundamental problems are still here, caused not simply by poor living conditions, but by a deep crisis of cultural identity. <laughs> Six 
Six of the returning children hit the headlines in January 1993. Depressed at the death of some of their friends in a house fire, they locked themselves in a hut and tried to commit suicide by sniffing petrol. A place where they can hallucinate away the cold and the bleakness of their lives in Davis Inlet. They were screaming my face, I want to die, I want to die, I want to hang myself. I don't care if I die. Let me go, she says. I want to sniff gasoline. I want to kill myself. The incident shocked Canada, turning the children into celebrities and making Davis Inlet, after years of neglect, the focus of media attention. Our obligation is to work with them and help them solve their problem. It's a problem that they, that they have and they've had for some time. And uh, you're quite right, the isolation that they live in is a contributing factor. Davis Inlet's first Innu police officer is John Poker's grandson, Simeon Chakapesh. It was Simeon who found the six children trying to kill themselves, and he's continued to work with them during their time at the treatment centre. Their problems echo his own experience growing up in Davis Inlet. I don't usually really say much when they're sniffing, actually sniffing. You know, when they start coming to sense, that's when I start talking to them. I usually say, it's not your fault. I know, I know it's hard for, for you. I understand why you sniff, because I've been going through with it and I share with my feelings with them. Okay, I always say that, okay, I'm here, I'm here, I'm gonna listen to you. The kids usually start crying when I say that, you know. I had a horrible, horrible growing up. I had a hard time. I'm glad I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm alive today. Because I shot myself once. That's how hard it is. You know, it, it's nobody, no human being wants want that life. Nobody. My parents were alcoholics. They committed suicide when I was 13, and I saw them. And I was the one who took the bodies out of the water, and I was only 13 years old. What, what do you expect a human being to live like that, you know, to understand? How, how can the white people understand? Because we're humans, we're not animals here. Oh. ま、私たちが作ったら。面白いな。あ。あの、人だからだったら、あれしてへんわけよ。で、じゃあ、ほとんど、まあ、見せといて、まあ、普通に話し。あ、自分の人だからだって。え、の、え、へんわけ、え、
I was never taught to be a hunter or to to learn about my culture. I was never taught like that. It was always the white culture that's that's uh, focused in the in the school. Like when my parents drowned, I don't feel much pain because I, I always felt that my father did it on purpose. So I always blamed my father for the death of the, of the family, my family. So I, I want to learn what really happened. And I want to learn that from my sister. Sometimes I, I attempted to ask her what happened, but I backed away. But I want to. I want to know what happened. What really happened? Tan de ego tan bien fino, ¿ve? No está fino, me tiene apagado. Ni apagado, me no hago. Pues no sé si te voy a decir, pero no está. Ego tan, o tan pesadaje. Que te han matado. No sé, no pasa, pero sabe bien, pero no. No sé ni si, no sé cómo te llevas con mi mamá, es que. みんなの、みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん。みんなじゃん
Bueno, voy a citar, más no se conoce, no. Pues no voy a decir, me llamo muy llamado. No más si yo que está allá nada. Under the government's outpost program, set up to cushion the impact of settlement, many families from Davis Inlet have decided to spend several months in hunting camps in the interior. They hope living in the country again will help them rediscover their Inu identity. Some young people believe that once John Poker is away from the settlement, he may regain the confidence to sing and play the drum. And if the hunting is successful, they also hope the elders will hold Mokashan the ritual meal in which every piece of caribou bone marrow must be eaten or burned. When we go back to the country, we love, John will be the leader. He will be the one to, who says what's going on or where we should go. <laughs> I got a lot of learning to do, I guess, from him. What life was like in her younger days, when my father was born. What, what do they do there? What, uh, what happened? Why did they stop going back to that place? ウィーペットランドウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィーペットウィ
Ja gut, wir haben gesagt, die Tore noch drauf, oder? Ja, wir haben gesagt, 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 ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジャバナ。ジ
Yeah. Um. 